WWE, they filed a complaint earlier this year in February uh, to Attorney General Ken Paxton. So remember that name, Ken Paxton. He's on uh, Brandon's Rolodex. Over the disclosure of records related to the Royal Rumble 2023 at the Alamo Dome uh, by the city of San Antonio. And of course, the Alamo Dome, a uh, public venue which is owned and operated by the city which is music to brandon's ears when he is uh, seeking out information and wwe is trying to state that there are trade secrets that contain proprietary information and fit into an exemption in texas's public information law which would prevent them from handing this information over to one brandon thurston of russellnomics and wwe they initially were provided this exemption last April, but then out of nowhere, like manna from the sky, this was reversed in January by the by the attorney general. And this came after a second records request because Brandon had the backing of Intelligence Options LLC, who also wanted to see this, this data. Now, we still don't know what intelligence options llc who they were representing but it had something yes, to do I, I have nothing to do with intelligence options llc yes. just to be clear yes uh let, let's not uh get our wording <laughs> mixed up here separate entities um yes. but any, anyway intelligence they, they look options, to be s- s- oh go ahead you're, you're, you're about to say yeah i mean they were connected to a lawsuit and they deal with litigation consulting so presumably some suit against wwe they were involved with but then the suit has been settled Again, we don't know what suit they were working with, but they took themselves out of this request, leaving Brandon with the decision, shall I stay or shall I go? And Brandon said, give me those records. And thus, yeah. we have moved forward here. So um, there has been a sworn declaration from WWE side uh, stating that if this were made available to Brandon uh, to publicize their financial information, WWE would lose their bargaining power in negotiating all of our live events and much of the value of a bidding process for venues. So all these site fees that you hear TKO just patting themselves on the back for and are just rolling in cash, Brandon could end it like that, okay, if he reported this. Zero site fees, okay? That's what's at stake here from the WWE side of things. The Texas Attorney General's office, apparently, they have better things to do because as of today... Have they responded, Brandon? Have they done anything to respond to this complaint by WWE? Uh, let me check the docket. Uh, uh, as of yesterday, when I looked, they have not. I'm loading the docket right now. Let, let's watch the, the docket load. Let's. We might as well. Let's put it right on the screen for everybody. Here it is. Um, no, no action. No action so far. So everybody, I want everyone to go and find Ken Paxton on Twitter. And I want everyone to ask Ken Paxton if he is going to respond to this because he was served March the 1st. And WWE is moving for a default judgment, okay? This is like a last man standing match. And Ken Paxton, we're at the count of nine, okay? So is he going to make the heroic stand up here? We're not too optimistic about it. So there will be a hearing on May 29th at 9 a.m. involving uh, WWE's attorney that they have hired, Trisha DeLeon, and Judge Jan Soifer about this default judgment. So that's an important date, May 29th, where I would assume if Ken Paxton is not so much as even responding to this, um, It gives a lot of leverage for the WWE side to argue, listen, this guy can't even be bothered to respond to this. We should get the default judgment and they could very easily just um, go along with this because there is basically no backing here by Ken Paxton. So that is the Royal Rumble side of things. But you know what? The state of Texas, WWE loves running the state of Texas. And you may recall that two Two WrestleManias have taken place in Arlington at AT AT&T Stadium since 2016 with versions number 32 and 38. So Brandon Thurston deciding, you know what, Ken Paxton, you are of you are not helping my case. So I'm going to go to your boss. And Brandon went to the governor's office, Greg Abbott, and he made a request for records related to those two WrestleMania events. And actually, WWE, just, just for WrestleMania 38, just for the 2022 WrestleMania. That's right. Because WrestleMania Cause we already have David Bixen fan already has the records for 32. Correct. So now WWE, it seems like they almost have a game plan in place. OK, like Brandon's face is up on a wall and it's like in case of this, do this. And these are the policies they now have in place. OK, you know what WWE legal they were looking up something called the deliberative process privilege. Can you tell us a bit about what the deliberative process privilege is, Brandon? 
Yeah, and just to be clear, so I've requested WrestleMania 2022, and I went to the governor and said, "Give me the, please give me the." Sorry, Royal WrestleMania 20- 30, 32 or 20. WrestleMania 38 in, in the year of 2022. I okay, request. you said WrestleMania 22. Gotcha, gotcha. 2022. I so for that that event and the Royal Rumble San Antonio 2023 event. So basically, I've made a second request pertaining to to the Royal Rumble, which they're trying to, to withhold. Which I did mention in, in my request. Hey, look, I know there's a lawsuit about this. Um, what is pr- uh, was it process privilege? What is it called? Deliberative, Deliberative. process privilege. Um, I, I gather it means. Um, this contains communications between agencies and and in a what, what does it say in there? And in a lawsuit, this would not be you would not be able to obtain it. Um, they, they say that it would it would chill the the, the ability to um, to make, you know, certain uh, governmental uh, opinions and advice. Um, the, so they're referring to in this um, letter where they're asking the attorney general, the, the governor's office is asking the attorney general to. Give us the exemption. And they're saying that because of delivered process privilege, which is in this exhibit B, which they didn't share with me, uh, which I understand is part of part of the law. Um, they're saying because of that exemption, this 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 fits that exemption. We can't release this. Um, I would suggest, well, even if it does redact it and give me what's what's left of it. Uh, but that's what they're claiming. That's related to WrestleMania 2022, WrestleMania 38 in Dallas in, in 2022. Um and do you know about what's what's happening with the re, with the request for Royal Rumble? Yes. So that is their game plan for WrestleMania 2022 deliberative process privilege. Royal Rumble 2023, they've said, "Wait a minute. We can we can we can have a multiple choice on this this box." So we have ticked off deliberative process pr- privilege, but you know what? Let's throw something else against the wall and see if that sticks because also we are going to claim an exemption under common law privacy. So again, Brandon Thurston is looking for records in the nature of paid attendance. What was the amount that uh, WWE was paid to bring such an event to Texas? These are the kinds of things he is asking about. And common law privacy this is how it is explained uh, in, in, this, in this letter. The office of the governor asserts that the information marked in this exhibit B, that again, Brandon has not seen, consists of information that is, quote, intimate and embarrassing and not of legitimate concern to the public. I would say anything intimate and embarrassing, I'm very interested as a consumer in, but I go on, including financial decisions that do not relate to transactions between an individual and a governmental body. Therefore, the office of the governor asserts the marked information is confidential under common law privacy and must be withheld under Section 552.101 of the government code. Yeah. Again, there's Exhibit B, which is attached and and shown to the attorney general. It'll be an assistant attorney general who makes the decision here. I, I don't see it, but they're saying that there's something in here. And by the way, so what I've asked for specifically is a very specific document called the disbursement request related to this event. Uh, David Bixenspan's request obtained that for WrestleMania 32 in 2016. And it's it's a, a very exciting document with all sorts of invoices, receipts. There's a, a table summarizing all the expenses that the local government ended up reimbursing the cost of which was they they got to w got to use at&t stadium for free because the government paid for it like a million dollars uh they got to use american airlines arena for free so my my uh inquiry is that well maybe the government paid for those costs uh relates to wrestlemania 2022 they got approved for nine million dollars so it's probably what they used it for maybe something similar happened in the case of royal rumble in san antonio maybe the government you know reimbursed the cost of uh using the alamo dome and, and using you know you know, uh, other costs. So that's what I'm trying to find out here. Again, I expect it to be a long list of receipts and invoices. What would be embarrassing uh, and highly intimate about that is is beyond me. Um, and it's it's one thing to, um, you know, it, it is relatively trivial to request records and get records pertaining to attendance and gates, ticket sales and things like that. But what, what I think is really in the public interest here is learning what did citizens' tax dollars pay for, um, and and shouldn't they be allowed to assess whether those dollars are being spent wisely? Not that I doubt that WB events benefit local economies, uh, but shouldn't taxpayers, citizens, that is governments, be allowed to 
get transparent pricing when it comes to site fees. So the more opacity there is about this, the more mystery there is about what a Royal Rumble or a WrestleMania is worth. And by the way, we know what this, what this year's WrestleMania is worth. It seems like a lot of this information is public as it is. In any case, shouldn't and, citizens... And not through people like having to necessarily battle through red tape. A, a lot of times we're getting these figures from TKO itself. Like they are boosting the fact that these figures are... Like site I, I don't I don't think WWE is giving the or TKO is giving the exact numbers. They're bragging about how much they're worth, right? Are they giving the exact numbers that you can think of? We well for Perth, we knew that the figure was around what twenty million dollars for a grouping of shows. I believe um, it said sixteen, but they sort of obscured how many events this really pertains to, right? Right. But they've attached dollar figures to it. But yeah, Perth is the one that that comes to mind uh, immediately. Yeah. Um, the government in Puerto Rico did tell me $1.5 million cash for backlash and an additional $300,000 value for the venue. Um, I'm guessing W was not happy when I reported that. Um, but, but they, the government told me directly, right. Um, and we know that because of a press release where Cardiff is bragging about what a benefit this was, they got, you know, some, some 10 times increase on, on their investment. It seems to imply that Cardiff, the, the Cardiff event was worth, I believe, $2.8 million when you convert the currency. Um, we know that the Las Vegas WrestleMania, sorry if I'm jumping ahead, will be $5 million that has been granted by the, the local Las Vegas organization. So we know a lot about what the site fees are. Saudi Arabia is $50 million. We've known that for a long time. Um, the, the actual cash site fee that WB got for WrestleMania in 2016 and WrestleMania in 2022 was $350,000, but they got millions of dollars worth of in-kind values. They got you know, things that they would have had to have paid for themselves, paid for by the government or actually by this intermediary, which is this local organ organizing committee that gets approval for the funding, spends the money for WB, and then gets paid back by the government later. In, in short, the government is ultimately paying for these uh, events and governments in Texas in San Antonio, around the world, who may be bidding for site fees in the future, they would perhaps, most likely, be able to bargain for a better price if they know as much as possible about what the other site fees are and what those agreements are like. Um, but if there's mystery about that, WB might be able to leverage a better price, a higher price for themselves, so that WB can be more profitable. This is just having like to like comparisons, like think about it in the free agency model of knowing what a second string quarterback is going to be getting on the open market versus, you know, what is the what is the rate for a second string quarterback on another team with with comparables like that is what they are trying to obfuscate here. or another wrestler and, in WWE or AEW. If you don't know what anybody else is making, it's harder to negotiate fairly and favorably for, for yourself. Amazing. Amazing how all, all these years have Dana White says no fighter should ever state how much they make because then all those those hanger ons, they're going to be coming after you. Um, I'm not even looking at WWE necessarily as the bad guy in this entire thing. They are doing this to protect their if they want to call them trade secrets, they want less information out there for their internal reasons. I look at the government here uh, in Texas as the ones here that they are the ones that should be representing the taxpayers, like they are the ones that should be the ones, this should not be you having to make this argument. It should be them operating on the side of the taxpayers and stating, hey, we are gonna be as transparent as possible, barring a outstanding reason that would prohibit us from allowing this. And I have not seen any argument here that this would be any kind of outstanding exemption to disclose reimbursement figures and site fees for an event that taxpayers are paying for and seeing their taxpayer dollars in action to bring these events to a state and how much they are paying in relation to what other states are potentially bidding on for, for these same events. So I look at the Texas government here as the ones that are letting down their people, especially when this was filed March 1st, and here we are on March 15th, uh, less than two weeks away from this hearing, and Ken Paxson has done nothing to even respond to this. And you would think that the state of Texas, the state level government, would be very incentivized to enhance, to, to create as much transparency around this as possible. We've got, you know, two, two cases here where, you know, there's been, you know, uh, a, a, a bidding 
one by the Dallas Arlington area and here's San Antonio. And those are not the only major markets in Texas. There's Houston and then there's Austin uh, at least. So it's, it's not like you won't expect sometime in the next few years for there to be additional bids if there haven't even been recently for some of these major W events. You think they would all be incentivized to try to get the best price uh, for, for how much government money is going to be spent here. Um, I have emailed the Attorney General of Texas asking them you know, what's going on with this. I, did, I believe I sent an email yesterday and I have not heard back. So if everyone wants to go on x to ken paxton tx his last tweet is just the words totally unacceptable so if you want to uh voice your concern to attorney general ken paxton you're you're welcome to to do so um i've made phone calls too i think i left i left a message and still haven't heard back you can also text ken to 82762 as well so maybe you can get on his mailing list maybe maybe that's where um Maybe that's where WWE should have sent this this notice to, and uh, we we would have gotten a response more uh, prompt. But I think this is a very important story to be following. It's like I'm curious if um, Texas is at all paying for this Jake Paul Mike Tyson fight that's happening at AT and T Stadium in July, um, which is expected to be a pretty sizable event for Netflix as it presents this this big uh, boxing fight. And you know, you could try to find out. Uh, who's above G Greg Abbott? I don't know if we can go much, much, much further. Well, you can you can try. You can you can send a, a records request. They all kind of use the same portal system too. It's it's very convenient. Okay. Well, we will look for that. Um, it's uh, apparently the, this response. It's in the same uh, missing in action as this uh, WrestleMania documentary. So it's uh, it's probably all going to get released all all in the same time. But uh, great work on your part, uh, Brandon.